All right, today I'm working on a 2007 Nissan Sentra. Um, this is the 2.0, I think it's the MR20DE or something like that. Um, very simple process. We're gonna be doing the CV axle replacement, so nothing too crazy. Um, I'm gonna, I have it so pretty high, as you can see I have it about a little bit over two feet off the ground. Um, I have it tilted more to this side because I just don't want tranny fluid coming out and so forth. Um, I'm gonna be doing the passenger side and the driver side, so check for the other video if you wanna learn how to driver si do the driver side. They're pretty much the same, nothing crazy. It's just that one's gonna be a lot more tighter than this to pop out. Um, this one just slide out. The other side, you gotta pop them out. Um, if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future. And we're gonna go ahead and start this video right after the intro. So um, jacking up point, basically um, you can jack it up from the frame right here, just like where I have my jack. And then for jack stand, I mean, we can put it, it's kind of the same area. This is our subframe, so I'll put it more towards the center, um, so forth. Uh, yeah, so I'm just going to put my jack stand right here, so just in case if anything happens. Also, um... One thing I forgot to mention, make sure you pull your emergency brake and then that you put a wheel chuck on both sides of the vehicle so that the car doesn't move. Um, because this is a front wheel drive and we're lifting up the front, so the rear wheel, it moves freely. Um, so go ahead and reinforce that area. All right, so next thing what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna take off these 21 millimeter um, nuts. All right, so now we have a lot more easier access to the vehicle or in the inside. Um, nothing too crazy. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this cotter pin right back. You're gonna get some pliers. All right, so we are gonna be taking off that little cotter pin. So we're just gonna grab it and then just spin it right back. All right, so I'm pretty sure this is a 33 millimeter. I have a 34. I just, my set doesn't come with a, a 33. So we're just gonna go ahead and pop this guy right off. Now, if you don't have an impact gun, what you can do is, you can go on this side right here and stick a screwdriver inside the fins of the rotor. So we're gonna stick a screwdriver right in there. I just want you guys to see. So you're gonna stick it right in here and wedge it in there, and then you're just gonna loosen it up. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do, I highly doubt, oh, it's a little bit seized on there. I'm gonna just gonna spray some WD-40 in there, and then we're just gonna go ahead and give it a tap. Now that'll just help break it free now if it doesn't come out that easy sometimes you got to get a little center punch with like it's a cold chisel and you can tap it in there um so you kind of you want it to push out but sometimes they get rusted in there and you you probably have to spray wd-40 give it a couple taps so go like that spray wd-40 tap it again spray wd-40 if it's really on there pretty tight um th if you're going to use like those little house hammers that's not gonna work. You gotta get one of these kind of hammers. Uh, this is a four pound hammer. Um, that's what you're actually gonna need. So next we got uh, 21 millimeter nuts and we have the, um, the stud too is 21 millimeter over here. Um, once, we um, once we take this, this thing is gonna drop. Now, if you wanted to do this as a little safety measure so we don't de destroy the brake line, we can pop out this little clip right now let me just get that going and then so you guys can see this so i'm just going to grab this little clip with the pliers and then we're just going to swing it right on by so just literally grab it like that and pull it right out 
And then now this will give us more access so when we drop it down, it's not gonna drop down that much. Um, it's when we take off these two bolts. Now, when you are touching this, you are gonna need an alignment right after because you are messing with the suspension a little bit. Um, it's not urgent, but I would recommend it so you don't wear out your tires. All right, so let me go ahead and take these off. Now I would recommend to have one wrench right here and then the on the other side, opposite side, you'll have the, the bolt as well. All right, so let's pull off these nuts. So normally this bolt doesn't usually pop out like that. You would have to put your hand on the bottom of the rotor. So just right here and then kind of use your knee to lift up a little bit. And then this guy should pop right out, but oh, well, I mean, it's actually on there. All right, so right here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push in the axle. So I'm gonna push in this axle right here just like that and then while I'm swinging this guy right out, you should have enough clearance. And then voila, well there we have this. All right, so now what we're gonna go ahead and do is we gotta take off a couple bolts on our CV axle. So right here, you're gonna see that one bolt right there and then there's a bolt right up there. Uh, let me point those out for you. So here, so there's that one bolt right here. Oops. So we gotta take off this one right here. And then this one right here too as well. I just wanna make sure we are ideal on that. So those are both 12 millimeters. And those are both 13 millimeters. So on our CV axle, make sure you clean up this little spot right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and put some um, dielectric grease. Now the reason why I'm doing this is to prevent this guy from ripping out the seal on the transmission. Now same thing, we're gonna go ahead and do this. Just put a little thin coat. Now that will keep it from rusting inside the area where this is gonna be mounted to. I mean, not that it's gonna be, that's gonna leak crazy, but just wanna be ahead of the game on that. All right, so what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna pull this out. I don't have a drain, pla drain pan under the car, so um, I'm kinda of taking a risk. It doesn't really matter, I can mop it up, um, but just keep a drain pan under the area where the CV axle mounts into the transmission so just in case if you have any spillage that you catch that and it doesn't mess up your floor. Um, so now there's a cover right here. Um, it was missing the tabs. Now basically, just let me show you, you can get a flathead screwdriver. There might be a couple in here. So there might be, was it one, two, three, four, and then five and six, but those were already missing. I might as well just pop this out so it could be easier for me. So I'm gonna take these two out. You're gonna wedge a flathead screwdriver in there and then you're just gonna pick at it from all sides just to evenly pick it out. All right, so I'm gonna do this. Oh, before we even take out the CV axle, right there we have this plate. Make sure we take that off. We can slide this right out anytime. If you wanna clean that, now would be a great time. All right, so let's go ahead and put pull this out i'm gonna pull it out and then slide it back in and then i'm gonna be explaining it i'm not gonna show this side where my hands are at i'm just want you guys to focus on what's going on over here just so you guys can see and i'm gonna be talking about it at the same time so while i have the other cb axle next to me by my side um i just just in case if it starts leaking fluid i'm gonna slide it in right and out real quick as possible so this literally should slide right out so got that slide right out no fluids coming out so that's great since there's no fluid coming out i'm just gonna wipe my area right here inside there i'm just gonna wipe that clean we want that clean and then i'm gonna put some uh dielectric grease or any kind of grease 
whatever. And then we're just gonna put a thin coat. Now this is aluminum, it won't rust, but it could corrode inside and then so forth. As we're putting this in there, now if your seal is leaking at the transmission, you need to replace that, but in my case it's not. So as I'm guiding this in the hole for the transmission, so right here, this is how you can see it. I'm putting this in there. Make sure you're not hitting the seal. Looks like that seal has been replaced before. So you want to level out the axle and then spin it in there. And that should be pretty much it when it goes inside there. I mean, you're not going to tap it in or anything. All right. So now we're going to go ahead and put on our axle plate. The one that covers the center support bearing, the one that locks that in. So we're going to go ahead and install that right now. Let's go ahead and put this plate on there. So we're going to go ahead and thread these in by hand first. Now I would say if you want to torque these down, say about 15 pounds might be ideal. 16 pounds. I think that should be pretty reasonable. All right, so pretty much same idea. If you wanted to, um, you could put like a little grease on the axle itself. It doesn't even hurt. I mean, if you ever have to replace this for the next time, or you could put it on the inside. Um, so this just helps out the next person or yourself if you ever have to do this again. Um, so we'll just literally put like a thin coat. It doesn't need to be crazy. And this will make it really easy, again, for the next person that does this job. All right, so let's bring that right in there. So you saw how I brought that in, like at an angle. And then you're going to go ahead and straighten it back out. And then we're going to go ahead and just put that in there. And then as we're doing that, so you're just going to rock this back and forth, both of them, until it locks right in. Then I'm gonna use my knees to, uh, it's actually not even that heavy. Just put this in there. Now you probably might need to bring the actual shock up for too. Now we're just gonna straighten that right out. Here goes the first one. And as for the second one, you might need to put, you're gonna push towards the car, just like that. Now I don't know the torque specs for those, but usually you tie them in so they're pretty on, they're pretty tight. Um, same thing for the axles, CV axles. I don't know the specs on that, but a couple of Uggas. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and put it back in our cotter pan, and then we'll just put that in there. We'll get our pliers. Then we'll just pull this guy back. Now you wanna make sure that's flat as possible. Now you can spin them the opposite ways or you can spin them against again with each other. All right. So last thing on this piece, we're gonna go ahead and put this guy in there. Now you need to make sure that that's seated inside. So let me see if I can get this in there without the camera being in the way too much. So let's see how that's being arched. All right, so we have that a little bit more in. I was doing it wrong the first time. I'm just gonna come and tap that in. So that's how far it should sit along. About a quarter of it, probably a little bit over a quarter of an inch up high. Right there, as you can see. Making sure you guys see that pretty well. Oh. 
I'm gonna ask for this. I'm gonna put this cover back on. Um, that's pretty much common sense. All right, so now we're gonna go to put on our wheel. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're gonna snug in the bottom and the top. Now this is called centering the wheel. Um, just so we it aligns and we don't get no wobbles. This happened to me once, so this is why I do this a lot now. Um, so you're gonna tighten in a star pattern, kind of. So you're gonna go one, two, three, and then four. And then that's pretty much it. Um, you're gonna go ahead and lower your vehicle and so forth. And then um, I'm gonna be doing the other side if you haven't already, give it a thumbs up. Comment down below if you have any questions regarding this video. And then give it a thumbs up for more upcoming videos in the future. And thanks for watching.